the idea that the Australian dairy industry should have a strong focus on profitability and a target level of profitability that industry organisations can focus their efforts around would appear self-evident. Given the industry has been suffering from almost two decades of reductions in dairy farm profitability and declining national milk production, it would appear equally important that this focus be correctly directed at profit and not on measures that have been contributing to the loss in profitability over recent years. Unfortunately, the profitability paper produced by Dairy Australia and the Australian Dairy Plan organisations has several significant weaknesses that will not result in profit being correctly evaluated by the industry and which would in all probability provide individual farmers targets that will not produce the profit that was assumed. This is due to the ADP profitability paper selecting a margin ratio, EBIT per kilogram of milk solids, that will mislead rather than inform farmers about how to improve profitability. In many instances, farmers that follow the guidelines in the ADP profitability paper and increase or maximize their profit margin will in fact reduce or decrease their profitability as profit is not maximized when profit margin or EBIT per kg of milk solids is maximized, but rather when the last kilogram of milk produced returns just enough to cover the cost to produce this kilogram. The background to the Australian dairy industry's present position includes a steady decline in national milk production for almost two decades, as this graph highlights. This graph covers the period from 1980 to 2020, with Australia in yellow and New Zealand in black. These trends are relatively similar for all states and regions, with the exception of Tasmania in dark green. This reduction in milk production has been driven by a commensurate loss in profitability over the same period, as I and others have documented. Although it has been suggested by some that milk price, climate, or government regulation, or lack thereof, has been at the heart of the industry's troubles, these are all issues that farmers and other countries also experience. And yet it is only Australia, in yellow, that has consistently seen national milk production decrease as this graph highlights. This graph covers the period from 2003 to 2020 and represents the growth in milk production for seven countries using one as a base in 2003. Whether the countries are wealthy or poor, well-governed or poorly governed, export or domestic focused, have a continental or island climate, with farmers receiving no support or some support, all the countries bar Australia have grown significantly. To arrest the decline in Australian milk production, given the length of time that reductions in milk supply have been occurring, will require a different strategy and focus to the existing one, or it would be reasonable to expect little change in outcome. So how should the industry measure profitability? Well, profit is defined as the return on the value of all assets employed in a business. Return on capital, otherwise described as return on total assets, is the ratio that measures profit. There is no sound alternative to utilizing return on capital as a measure for setting profitability targets and then monitoring dairy industry performance. There are two components to total return on capital, the operating return on capital and the change in value of the total assets over time. Both components are important and both will be recommended for monitoring. However, it is the operating return on capital that can be significantly influenced by farm management, as well as by the unit value of inputs and outputs. So it is this component that would be recommended as the primary measure. How might the industry determine an industry target? Firstly, the suggested range would be between four and 6% 6 return on capital. An average level lower than 4% would be unlikely to result in most farmers maintaining sufficient reinvestment in their businesses for national milk production to be sustained. While an average level over 6% may well result in asset values being bid up, 
with one outcome being a reduction in the operating return on capital. A reasonable proposal would be for the industry to target a 5% operating return on capital. This level of profit should be a realistic target as it is similar to the level of profit in Victoria and Tasmania in the period 2000 to 2006, when the industry was competitive with most other countries. This target for operating return on capital would most probably convert into a total return on capital approximately 2 to 3% higher than this, once an increase in the value of farm assets was added. So a 5% operating return on capital would most probably convert into a 7 to 8% total return on capital over time, accepting that increases in land values or capital gains have not historically been linear, but often include periods of little change in values, followed by shorter periods of more significant change. For the Australian dairy industry to measure profitability against a target, it is also important that this target does not vary too significantly year on year. However, all ratios that include total revenue within the calculation will exhibit significant variability annually due to the impact of changes in milk price. This irregular annual result will mean it is not possible to monitor the industry's performance effectively or assess progress against a meaningful target. This issue can be addressed by using a rolling multi-year average of a ratio. A four-year rolling average would be the minimum required to provide a relatively robust and consistent measure of profitability. This graph outlines the rolling four-year average of return on capital for Victoria, the three main dairy regions in Victoria, and Tasmania. This table outlines how an industry profit target of a 5% return on capital could be applied to each state and the three main regions of Victoria. The table is largely based on recent benchmark data from the Dairy Farm Monitor Project and QDAS, although it has only been created as a guide to highlight how this profit target could be applied. Importantly, the 5% return on capital target can be readily developed into a full range of targets for each state and region. You can see how the benchmark values of total investment per cow vary across the country, and from this the, ratio, the profit per cow can be calculated. Similarly, once stocking rates are entered for each state and region, profit per hectare can be calculated. Next, production per cow, including milk fat and protein percentage, is added. This allows any milk ratios to be calculated as milk solids, actual litres or energy corrected litres. Energy corrected litres may have, have been corrected to 4% milk fat and 3.3% protein, with this ensuring litre ratios can be effectively compared. Milk price can then be entered, in this case on a milk solids basis, with the litre prices then calculated from this, with all these data entries allowing the balance of the ratios to be calculated. Cost of production per kilogram of milk solids or per litre, profit or EBIT per kilogram of milk solids or per litre, and operating profit margin. So although it's recognised that many farmers and their advisors may not commonly use return on capital when discussing business performance, and might be more familiar with ratios like profit per hectare, EBIT per kilogram of milk solids, or cost of production per litre, as long as return on capital is used as the base for calculating these, then these other ratios will be linked to a defined level of profit. Equally, this table can demonstrate how any of these other ratios could not be used by the dairy industry as a proxy measure for measuring and monitoring profitability. If profit per cow was used, then to produce a 5% return on capital, this ranges from $500 per cow for Northern Victoria to around $1,000 per cow for Western Australia. If profit per hectare was used, then this ranges from $1,250 per hectare for Southwest Victoria to around $2,600 per hectare for New South Wales. If cost of production per kilogram of milk solids was used, then this ranges from $4.60 per kg for Gippsland to a little under $6 per kg for Queensland. If operating margin was used, then this ranges from 18% for Northern Victoria 
to a little over 30% for Queensland and Western Australia. And if EBIT per kg of milk solids was used, then this ranges from around $1.10 per kg for Northern Victoria to around $2.60 per, per kg for Queensland. Queensland's, Queensland's EBIT per kilogram of milk solids is more than twice that of Northern Victoria, and the balance of the states and regions is spread between these extremes. This table is in the same format and looks at how this group of ratios change with a range of production systems. From low to high production, including feedlot production. The table is loosely based on Victorian data, though it has only been created as a guide to highlight how this profit target could be applied. Again, you will see that there was no proxy ratio for calculating profit with this 5% return on capital converting into a range of results for profit per cow, profit per hectare, cost of production, EBIT per kilogram of milk solids or per litre, and operating profit margin. These represent the range of results for just one region in one state. And you can see even for this range, for, it, for this region, it would not make sense to choose a single target for EBIT per kg of milk salts. This last table has been developed to highlight how straightforward it would be to provide a relevant group of ratios to an individual farmer, or to say a group of farmers who were discussing farm business performance while attending a discussion group on a farm property. The example is for a New South Wales farm, where the first column is based on the New South Wales benchmark performance of a 5% return on capital was being attained. The second column has the farmer's actual data, where the farm has been delivering a 5% return on capital. Though there was a higher value of assets invested per cow due to a higher proportion of irrigation, a higher stocking rate due to this irrigation, and a slightly higher expectation of milk price than the average. So for this farmer, a 5% return on capital can be converted into these ratios. The farm discussion is around how to increase profitability in this instance to a 6% return on capital. You can immediately see what this level of profitability would mean for a group of key ratios, with only the green shaded numbers needing to be adjusted to calculate these target ratios. So where does this leave the development of a profitability paper for the Australian dairy industry? Firstly, the ADP paper has not selected a ratio that actually measures profitability. And concerningly, by selecting a profit margin ratio, if this is used by either the industry or individual farmers, it will lead to many farmers reducing their present level of profitability and putting them and the industry in a poorer position. As a result, it is essential that return on capital is used as the measure of profitability, as this defines profit. Next, for farmers to produce sufficient cash to invest in their farms and over time grow their business, the minimum level of operating return on capital required is likely to be around 4%, and a recommended range for the dairy industry to target would be 4 to 6%. I would propose an industry target of 5% return on capital. I would also propose that this is based on a four-year rolling average so that annual volatility is reduced and monitoring can be more effective. In the last three to four years through to 2019, the average level of profit in Australia has been around a 2% return on capital. To lift this to 5% will require a significant reduction in cost of production, which will in turn require some significant changes in strategy by most participants in the Australian dairy industry. I have written a paper in support of these recommendations, and this can be sourced from the Red Sky website under presentations and papers. The web address and my contacts are on the closing screen. Thank you.